This conference will now be recorded. Go ahead. Okay, uh, it's a little after 2, 201 by my uh, computer. I call this meeting to order. Um, my system, for some reason, only allows me to see uh, four people, including myself, plus this um, screen sharing. So if you would, go ahead and introduce yourself so that I know who all is here. Diane Heinz, I'm here. Okay. I'm Robert Strickland from Greater Classic Plains, and I'm here. Wonderful. And Don, Don I heard that you're... Okay. Hey, uh, Is Don there Bain. anybody else besides Gail? Julia Decker, I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Planning manager. Hello. Hi, Julia. I can't see you, but I hear you. <laughs> Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we will be getting the meeting summary um, once it's been transcribed, so no comment, nothing to uh, talk about there. So I hope that you've all had a chance to uh, review goal six and um, also the recommendations on table one. Um, that the staff had. So I'm opening it up to comments. I don't know that I, where is table one? I I saw a table two, I, I didn't find a heading table one. Well, Robert, you're ahead of me because I didn't find any table headings either, but I'm a, I, <laughs> I was assuming that, uh, um, Table one is air, water, and land resource quality existing policies, and that's the red heading. Is that correct? That's Gail? correct. I apologize for that error and not labeling the table correctly. <laughs> that's okay. And then table two is uh, the same, um, but it is policy review, class of planes. And then table three is uh, identified. Okay, thanks for uh, uh, asking for that clarification. Any comments on uh, what has been presented here? Yes. Um, okay. I'm not sure where it was, but um, there were two or three items. Uh, one was there are no air quality monitoring stations in Clasip County, but I recall that during smoky times, somehow there was monitoring at Jeffers Garden, uh, or at least that was where my the air I breathe was monitored supposedly by the county. Uh, another one is there let's, was let's a reference take, to state. Robert, Robert, hold on just a second. Let's just, yeah. just take one at a time, if you don't mind. Otherwise, I get confused. Uh, I noticed that also, Gail. Thank you, Robert, for bringing that up. Uh, and I also um, monitored air quality during the fires from various places. But I'm so. Can you clarify that when in the report uh, says that there is no, there are no air quality monitors in Clatsop County? So yes, I can. So perhaps my um, caption under the the map that came from the DEQ website was that there it does not show any DEQ monitors in Clatsop County. So again, I apologize for my error and not making that more more clear for everyone. So the, the, uh, what what I'm hearing you say is that uh, on the map that we we have in our report about no air quality monitoring stations, that means no DEQ air monitoring. Correct. State. And so my caption should have been more fully explained to state that there are no Department of Environmental Quality air monitoring stations in Clatsop County per the information shown on their map, which I got from the DEQ website. Perfect. Who, Thank you so much for that clarification. The, who offered, operated the Jeffers Garden Station? I don't know the answer to that. Right. I apologize. No, that's okay. I, I don't either. 
All we know is that it's not DEQ. Okay, uh, Robert, you had another one? I had two more, I think. Uh, there was a, a reference okay. to a state highway department. It has not existed for decades. It's the Oregon Department of Transportation. So, so, so when you come across the phraseology, Oregon Highway Department, that was a previously existing entity. It no longer exists. Yes, and on table one, which uh, again, I, I apologize for not having numbered, but that's the table, the red table, uh, policy eight, uh, you'll see that the staff recommendation is to retain the policy, but to also update the department names. And I explained what they are called in the policy and what we are currently calling them today. So. Thank you. I should have noticed that. Thank uh, you. Hey, lastly, there was a reference to methods to reduce congestion and air pollution on Marine Drive slash Commercial Street should be explored. Uh, I, that's a curious problem. Uh, Astoria beat it to death, did explore it, but then decided they really didn't want to take traffic off from in front of their shops along Commercial Street. So, you know, it was kind of, uh, yes, it was addressed, but kind of beyond the county's jurisdiction, uh, they basically said, hell no, we, after all, don't want uh, the traffic moved down to Marine Drive with a capital M. So what I'm hearing you say is that you uh, want the wording updated to, um, I would like to see it updated to food congestion all along 101 in Clatsop County because it's an issue everywhere. So that would be my would recommendation. Like would you like more congestion or less congestion? Uh, more fatal crashes, fewer? Uh, what, do you have a solution in mind? More, more freeways. Any thoughts? No, but I, uh, I think that we do need to look into. I'd like to see it in the plan uh, that it addresses methods to reduce congestion and air pollution along Highway 101. I, I look forward to your concepts. I don't have anything specific. I'm keeping the same language, just replacing Marine Drive and Commercial with Highway 101. Anything you know, else on that? Uh, just on the topic, uh, I have followed the gyrations since about 1959. You know, on that very same topic. Uh, so I. I I will be happy to see anything that my fellow committee members uh, envision. I, you know, I've I've been around the topic for uh, sixty years, literally. Mm -hmm. You know, on on a, a stakeholders advisory committee. We are uh, for the segment of. 101 from uh, below surf pines up, uh, up to uh, the Diane Pints turnoff, just north of Patriot Way. Okay. There, there has not been a a solution. Uh, proposed that went along with a limit to ODOT funding for rural areas like us. Right, I think that th that is a larger issue and, and uh, in the comprehensive plan, I just want to keep this, I'd like to see this uh, maintained that we continue to look for um, methods to reduce con congestion. I'm not saying that we have any or that I have any at this time, 
um, and I'm I'm looking more um, on a general basis to just keep it in the plan. One one idea to come up with would what, what would a uh, ideal population be? You know, would it help if we doubled our population? Would that eliminate the problem? Because the traffic would be so bad, people wouldn't want to move here. You know, I'm I'm certainly open to any good ideas like that. You know, I I know we know how to deal with elk. We uh, uh it, we assign sharpshooters, but on uh, as far as population, I've never heard it stated what our population goal is in the county and uh, or our traffic goal i i, I would love to, i would yeah, love I, to hear are... the our yep go uh, that would that would be a difficult uh, number to come up with so uh, I did want to mention something else on this page, and if you don't have anything else, Robert. Uh, I, I think even if we could bracket it and say, you know, get them to start with something like, well, we really don't want um, a population of a million in Classic County. That would be a huge leap forward. You know, but I, I, I think getting them to say, well, would we like 50% more people in the county, along with 50% more cars along 101? Uh, so with the, uh, that, I think, sorry. is going to stump them. So, uh, Gail, would this be a discussion better uh, covered under goal number 14, urbanization? Uh, that may be one possible location. Also, goal 12, which is transportation. Okay, good. Um, but for now, that's that was my only suggestion, except that a little bit farther down the uh, page, just to update the language, the county shall continue its efforts to find an acceptable regional solid waste disposal site. And I understand that that's been done, correct? So that uh, por that portion could... Yeah, Go ahead. To, an, to an extent, so we what we have created is a hazardous waste facility, which is a little bit different than just a solid waste disposal site. That's, yeah, that's right. So we want to leave that in there. And Robert, I'm not trying to uh, um, cut you off here. Was there anything else you wanted to say about the congestion? I mean, I know that there's lots of things to say. No, no, no I, I, I just... Uh, uh, I think it's great when anything we say is not vacuous. Okay. Um, thank you for bringing those those points up. Uh, is there are there other items that anybody wants to bring up? I'm going to. I'm going to, well, on my screen, page 35, it's table two, point and area air pollution sources in Clatsop County, 1970. Oh, Mary, could we back up for one second to um, policy six on table one? Yes. Policy yes. six. The, um, the recommendation of the staff to eliminate the first, second, uh, first sentence and move the second sentence uh, re regarding the groundwater study that um, has there been or is there an ongoing groundwater study? Yes, but, this is um, the um, 208 study that was completed, I believe, back in 1982. Uh -huh. So that study is, uh -huh. is done. It's, uh, and obsolete also, probably, because the groundwater has very different constituents now, I'm sure. So so your your suggestion to um, move the, the the consideration to the Clatsop Plains community plan does that mean to eliminate policy six? Are you suggesting to eliminate policy six from the um, goal six? 
so the suggestion was to remove it from the countywide comprehensive plan since it applies very specifically to the Clatsop Plains area and just include it in the Clatsop Plains community plan. So is there a groundwater um, policy for the rest of the county? Is there a, is there ground? There are groundwater policies for the rest of the county. Uh, we looked at those in goal five, and you have actually looked at this policy as part of our goal five water okay. resources comments uh, and did agree with the staff recommendation. Uh, so, but okay. it's now that you're looking at it in a different context, you may want to reevaluate. So, in terms of what to do with policy six, Basically, your recommendation is to delete it from the countywide policy, right? Right, but it would still remain in the community, Class of Plains community plan, which is part of the comprehensive plan, but it's specifically right. addressing your particular planning area. And so each planning area would have their own groundwater um, um, study. Not necessarily their own study. Um, Remember, this is a study that was completed in, nearly yeah. 40 years ago um, yeah. and for a very specific reason related to development and uh, groundwater quality issues specifically to the class of plains. We're not seeing these issues at the same level in other planning areas throughout the county. Uh, so it's, I can't say with 100% certainty that every planning area would have its own groundwater study. I do know that the county as part of the strategic plan that they've adopted last December, December 2020, has put a recommendation in there to do another groundwater study. And that would actually, uh, if it moves forward, would likely occur sometime probably in 2022-2023. And would that be county Why? I'm sorry to be in the weeds here, but would that be county what? wide? Or? Uh, it's probably, again, going to be focused on the Clatsop Plains area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, I it needs to be done. And the, as the lakes along 101 the, um, the disappear due to eutrophication, it seems timely to get on for the county to take um, an active role in um, remediating those disappearing lakes. So, and then um, the community plan, the Clatsop Plains community plan, what is that? <laughs> Sorry to be dense, but. Yeah, so the Clatsop Plains, each of our six planning areas has a specific plan that looks at um, the same 18 goals, basically, that we're reviewing for the complete countywide plan but uh, looks at it from the perspective of just their planning area. And it's a bit more tailored and a bit more uh, specific in its detail on some of its policies and recommendations. So typically, as we've been doing our worksheets, goal uh, table two has been pulling out the plans or the policies specific to the Class of Plains community plan. Now, in this particular instance, um, there were no specific policies put into your community plan that were specifically under the air, water, and land uh, resources quality goal. So you don't have anything to review on table two today, but normally you have been. So how well, do I, I, I would note that when... Go ahead, Robert. I would note that when when rural problem solving phase two occurred, uh, the Citizens for Sensible Land Use made sure that we didn't contemplate uh, groundwater pollution uh, or silver spot butterflies. So, so there, it, it wasn't just out of ignorance that what we have done in the past. Uh, didn't leave a trail saying, gee, we should look after pollution of the aquifer. Uh, it, it was recognized uh, as a hazard to uh, real estate wealth amassment. Uh, 
and Diane, I believe you had something to say. Well, I'm still trying to figure out how we get the um, Classic Plains Community Plan to reflect a need to do a specific groundwater study in the um, groundwater in Classic Plains. And I don't see if we take it out of the um, countywide policy and put it in the Classic Plains com um, Community Plan policy, I don't see it there. I don't see a plan to address so that groundwater concern that's addressed specific to Clatsop Plains in policy six in table, in goal six in table one. I'm sorry, this is very- I'm hearing you would like to see nope. that addressed. No, no, no. I'm sorry. What? I, I, I'm hearing Diane that you would like to see it addressed in the Clatsop Plains community plan? I think it, it needs to get, If it's going to be taken, if we're gonna eliminate um, that policy six from the county's goals and where it says consideration shall be given to protecting lakes from further degradation. If we're gonna take it out of the county's um, goal six, policy six, then it should show up somewhere in the that's a plan. Unless I'm completely misunderstanding this process, which is possible, it, we need so, to have that addressed by the so my, my, under, my understanding here is that's exactly what the staff is recommending. Uh, move the second sentence, which is consideration shall be given to protection to the class of Plains community plan. So it comes out of the county plan, but it goes into the community Right, plan, exactly. But then when the we class get of Plains the, community plan. Does when that make sense? It, yes, it would make sense if when we got to the um, to that or that's up on the screen now, if it was addressed there. But there's no, uh, there's nothing there. So I'm just saying it needs to go there. We should put it there. I think it it just hadn't shown up there yet. But well, that was the plan. Is that am I understanding that? Right. So when you're making your recommendations on the policies, they aren't updated in real time, so to speak, so that you are making recommendations that taken as a whole will eventually go to the Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners for final review and adoption. Once the adoption is complete, then we post a brand new plan that's got all your recommendations in there. So okay. what I did, um, so that we don't lose this, is I put um, basically I cop I took out the reference to the 1982 plan, but did yeah. put in here that um, this will be a new policy that we would add. But, yes. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, did, thank you. Is that clear now, Diane? Yes, it wasn't that it wasn't clear, it's that it was missing. So now yeah. it's there and I'm going feel like it's missing. And I understand that when you make a recommendation before we accept the recommendation, you can't put it in the recommendation um, under a different um, plan. So it's, you know, we're fine. I'm fine. Okay. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Good discussion. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, I know you guys will come up with something. So I'm going to slip one thing in here, and that is uh, uh, under Table 2, Point and Area Air Pollution Sources in Classic County, 1978, uh, that needs to be updated because there are places that don't exist anymore and probably some that do exist and aren't there. I, I only bring it up because it doesn't say anything about it in the, the colored tables. So I'm sorry, Mary, which... Where, it's you... page 35 on my screen, but it's table two, pointed area air pollution sources. Um, it's right at, right, it's uh, under air quality. Okay. There you go. You found it. It's just uh, outdated. So that was a recommendation that I had. And... Can we go back for one minute to um, to table yes. one, um, 
policy 11 under goal six? Certainly. You know I'm going to bring this up, but uh, um, policy 11, um, the standards for noise will be considered for inclusion as standards in the county's industrial commercial zones. Why are we limiting standards for noise, noise to commercial and industrial zones? Good question. So I can't speak to why this was done specifically in 1980. Uh, I understand what your concern is. I don't know what our limitations may be in terms of um, imposing noise standards on Camp Rylea. So that would be something I'd have to check with our county council on. Okay, because in the staff recommendations, you also limit it to the industrial and commercial zones. And I think it's more important to limit noise pollution in residential zones where it actually has a uh, negative impact. You know, the the, um, the counties adopted a uh, um, definition of noise pollution that's you know <laughs> raising blood pressure and and uh, a, a, a great number for of human and animal uh, detriment as a result of noise pollution, and then kind of glosses over it in the um, policies. So I'm just suggesting that that language gets strengthened because um, and and broadened if it's possible. And I'm not only talking about Camp Rylea. I don't think you can cite a um, I don't think you can can cite a um, uh, any kind of uh, noise creating industry in the middle of a pop in the middle of a residential area they don't they don't put rifle ranges or you know in um in downtown astoria so i'm just and you know the as the population of classic plains becomes more dense it it is a consideration that uh, if we're going to allow that kind of develop development we would need to make that in an inhabitable environment for everybody so I just, you know, I mean, it, whatever you can find out, Gail, about um, how to broaden that, and also what the specifics of the noise pollution um, um, parameters are. You know, 100 feet from the source of the noise, or or 50 feet from the source of the noise, which I do believe was the years ago was the standard for um, Clatsop County. I don't know what happened to that ordinance, but. Yeah, anyway. I, can tell, I can tell you right now, uh, we don't have anything quite that specific in our ordinances at this time. Uh, the C Classic County Code basically has quiet hours between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., which when you should not be making undue noise. And then in terms of our commercial and industrial standards, it's uh, very general language that talks about uh, I'd have to read it, but it's very general language, does not have a specific benchmark uh, to and measure the noise there, levels. Is there any interest in the county in um, in tightening up those parameters, or am I just barking up it? Um, we've never, at least in, in my department, we've not really had a discussion about that, and I know the board uh, in the past couple of years has not had any discussions about it. It doesn't mean that there's not an interest. I think it's just that other um, issues have risen to the top more than this has. So. Yeah, well, because it shows up in your summary, in your overview, um, and it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty strong indictment of noise pollution. Um, uh, it seems like it's something that the county might be willing to take on in the so what I'm go ahead so what I'm hearing you say Diane is that you would like to uh, uh, propose <clears throat> that the language under policy 11 include residential zones uh, yes. I think that I think that your um, bringing up a rifle range was very apt um, I'm thinking also it seems like there should be some limitation on the amount of noise that people can make. 
Is there, uh, so if somebody did want to put in a rifle range, is there anything uh, prohibiting them from putting one in next door to me out in the county? Probably the zoning would pre prevent it. Uh, firing ranges are permitted in very few zoning districts. Uh, Camp Riley is district being one, obviously. And then I believe uh, the forestry zones would permit them as well. But uh, unless you're next to an F-80 parcel, then mostly the zoning would not permit it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm looking for comments from other um, committee members and about including something, uh, a language that includes residential as well as information, uh, industrial commercial zones regarding performance standards for noise because um, as was pointed out in the um, overview, noise is a polluting factor and um, something that uh, as we get possibly more uh, people could become more of an issue. So I just like, uh, what do you guys think? I think the that there are others in the hominids that don't like noise also. And I, I'm, I'm not attempting to create a list of uh, creatures great and small that are bothered by loud noises. But uh, I I think, you know, where we say residential zone, yeah, but I think it also applies to agricultural zones. Uh, you know, that uh, I, I know that when our darling neighbors in their RA zone bring their reservation fireworks down uh, and there are, you know, there, there are things that are freely sold at Walmart that when you shoot them, they explode extremely loudly uh, because that's what they're designed to do. Uh, so they're they're all they're all legal, uh, but they're meant to be horrifically loud, and somehow that is that's taken for granted. But it's not just residential; it's RA zones. It's EFU zones. Uh, so I, I, I think we need to keep uh, you and Diane in charge of, uh, you, know, you know, looking after the muskrats and everything else that uh, uh, wearies of things that go boom. Okay. The county needs to define the standard. If they sit, talk about standards, then they need to define those standards. It's, you know, because otherwise nothing happens. We we got Camp Rylea because those standards weren't, def I mean, we got the enhanced training schedules at Camp Rylea because they already chose to ignore what were pretty obvious, um, you know, wildlife and, and human life. Um, denizens of the area that is occupied, the, the expanded area that's occupied by Camp Rylea. And I think there was some, uh, this is from Hal Snow many years ago because he was my neighbor here. And um, he did some investigation and he said that the, that the um, military department itself had a population density where they couldn't pr do um, over, or, uh, over which they couldn't do specific um, live training like the ones that they're doing now. And their solution to that was to annex 3,000 acres of Crown Zellerbach land across the highway from where Camp Rylea is so that it would dilute, it would expand the amount of unpopulated area, therefore diluting the, the population requirements set by the Oregon um, military department. This is all from Hal Snow and somewhere it's written down, you know, in an archive I have 20 years ago, but but um, they already knew that they were violating the um, the, our, the uh, live training requirements of the Oregon military department. They did it anyway. They just figured out a way to get around what the standards were. So I think the standards need 
some kind of definition other than saying standards that um, commit the, the um, violators to a, a, you know conduct that isn't so intrusive to the wildlife and human life that live here. Blah, blah, blah. I'm on my soapbox again. No, also, no, they, good job, Diane. They so, could, uh, Gail, is there, uh, are there standards? Right, so um, in our commercial and industrial zones, uh, we have general performance standards, but we do not identify a specific threshold. So to say 50 decibels or 200 decibels, there's no specific number that's a cutoff point. So on the notes here, I made a note that we need regulations to be strengthened especially when uses, including all non-residential uses, are adjacent to residential areas. We need noise limits in residential areas also, and review them. Uh, the example given uh, was firework noise, for example. Uh, and then we also need to establish specific noise levels, hash thresholds. So does that does that uh, capture, capture uh, uh, Diane? Does does that capture uh, your thoughts? Yes. Thank you. Good. Well, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Good cat. I live with it every day. <laughs> they could also uh, yeah. correct the errors on the uh, on their training schedule because finally they got one right, but uh, they were training all month without having those trainings appear on the schedule very oh error they ruined my birthday party oh sorry to hear that where you have to be um, outside you know we're supposed to be outside and then they said they were gonna train on the 20th and they trained on the 17th and my whole family had come to uh, listen to the, the war zone just infuriating again you know this, this is years of they're violating the trust with the neighborhood. Anyway, that I'm done. I'm gonna mute my mic. I hear I hear your frustration. So um, I do have one other uh, point that I wanted to bring up, but I want to hear from everybody else first. Anybody else have something that they want to bring up? Hearing uh, hearing nobody. Uh, I didn't see anything in here about light pollution. Would that be covered under a different goal or um, would it be under this? Well, that's a good question. It's not quite air, water, or land. Um, yeah. I know that we, the county did adopt in 2020 a dark sky ordinance that applies to the unincorporated areas of the county, uh, but I this is a good, as good a goal as any to put it in. If it covers noise, why not light? Absolutely. I know that the city of Seaside has adopted a light ordinance, and um, it's really useful that, and then you don't have a neighbor's lights shining in your bedroom at night. Um, as an example, just to kind of give some parameters to this. I need to call the city because a uh, storage unit clear across the pasture is shining a light into my bedroom. And I'm thankful that the city of Seaside does have some uh, guidelines on that. And they just need to replace those lights so that the light is down facing instead of shining, you know, half a mile away into my house. And I think that this is something that should be in the comprehensive plan. Uh, regarding light pollution. Uh, thoughts on that? Uh, any idea on, on how that could be worded, Gail? Well, since the county has adopted a dark sky ordinance, uh, maybe we would want to include a policy that references that adopted ordinance and that the county will continue to enforce the requirements of that ordinance. 
Wonderful. Yeah, that would be great. And for it. OK, um, where are we? Let's uh, anything else on table one or two? Oh, sorry, I've got a tickle. Um, let's move move on to table three, new issues and policy worksheet. Comments. Hearing none, I did have something on the first one. Uh, clean water, state revolving fund, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it says under the proposed solution, uh, revolving fund to be used for, for below, mark, below market rate loans to assist low income property owners. Um, was Is there a reason why it's only low income? Because this seems like a it would be in the general best interest uh, for everybody to make it easier to repair or replace septic systems. Yeah, I'd have to double check, Mary, to see if that's a requirement of that revolving loan fund, and it may very well be. I, I just don't remember right now. Okay, that's just a question that I had, uh, you know, maybe note it that uh, if, if it's part of that uh, funds requirements, that's, that's what it is. Um, and then and I'm going back to the solid waste disposal site for septage. Is that, what is that? What is septage? That's what they pump out of your septic tank. And the, the issue right now is that the plant in Warren. Oh, well, I've capacity. never heard that term before. Yeah, and so it's what they used to take. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, it used to be that Seaside found it easier to take it out and dump it in Lewis and Clark. And at some point, uh, it became odoriferous. Uh, but it was uh, the easiest, cheapest way to dispose of septic of of sewage plant waste. You know, and kind of the idea, the solution to pollution is dilution. So the idea was, if you take a whole lot of it and spread it over acreage, it's no longer polluting. But the uh, the the neighbors down in lower of Lewis and Clark, I don't think found that to be an adequate answer. I can imagine. So uh, what what I'm seeing here is this is this would be an additional policy that uh, the county will work with private owners to identify a future site. Am I understanding that correctly, Gail? That's correct, Mary. Okay. Well, I'm all for that. And the last thing that I had, um, and it talks again about noise, quality of life issues, sort of associated with changes to work patterns and impacts from home occupations, established no, no, noise standards for home occupations. So I'm assuming this is something like if uh, uh, my neighbor decided to, uh, you know, fix up and test race cars in their garage. Is, am, am I understanding that correctly? Uh, it could be something like that. Uh, first thing that comes to my head would be a woodworker who maybe uses power mm -hmm. tools as part of making furniture. Well, this, what, what is, um, what covers a uh, rock band deciding to practice at high mm -hmm. decibels? The only thing that would cover it right now would be the class of county code. And again, that really only establishes a quiet period between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Uh, unless they're okay. playing an actual concert and people are paying money to come there to, to see the band, uh, we wouldn't look at that as a home occupation. It would be no different than if you were to sit down and practice the piano in the afternoon. 
Okay. Okay. Int great. Thank you. So what uh, you're proposing, or what we're proposing, I guess, is to establish noise standards for home occupations. How is that determined? Is there a state guideline, a federal guideline? I don't believe there's a federal guideline, and I'm not aware necessarily of a state guideline, so that would be established by the county. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? You guys are quiet today. And we do not have any public. Um, anything that you want to bring up, Gail, that we may have missed? Uh, Carol Johansson just joined us, so we do now have a member of the public. Wonderful. Uh, welcome, Carol. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see you, but uh, I'm sure that you're here. Um, we're finishing up um, our meeting here, or our discussion, I should say. Is there anything that you wanted to uh, comment on? Her mic is off. Carol's mic is off, so if she's talking, we're not hearing her. She she has never spoken at a meeting yet. Okay. Uh, she is unmuted on our end, uh, so, but oh. I've never, of all the meetings that she's attended, she has never spoken. Okay. Okay. Uh, there was one other thing that I had, and that is on page 42 of my document. Let me get there. It's just a cutoff sentence. Uh, uh, and this is under Oregon Statewide Assessment of Non-Point Source Problems. That's it at the very end. It says, which causes a substantial loss of land or a nearly. And I'm not sure what happens after that. Okay, likely all that language will be going away. Uh, this is from the 1980 goal six. So um, if we were to keep any of that in, then we'll make a note to fix the incomplete sentence. Okay, thank you. So I'm opening this up now. Does anybody have any further comments? Remember, I can't see everybody, so if if you have something to say, don't just wave your hand or a flag. Um, speak up. Hearing none, um, I guess that we will go ahead and uh, adjourn this meeting. I, again, want to thank all of you for your thoughtful and insightful um, perusal of these uh, policies and I look forward to seeing you again next month which is April and it'll be April, April it looks like it'll be April 8th correct and you'll be reviewing goal 8 which is recreational needs uh, we are delaying goal 7 uh, to get to a point where the county's adopted the multi-jurisdictional natural hazards mitigation plan, which would tie in with goal seven. So until that's completed, we're going to skip ahead and keep moving forward with the other goals. Okay. Thank you. And um, Gail, I want to thank you and Julia, any other staff involved in these great reports that you put out. So thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Can't imagine the amount of work that it goes that goes into this to convey this to people like me that are not familiar with the workings of government. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. I am so glad that, that Gail is uh, getting replaced as a transcriber. Yeah, that was a horrible utilization of her ground talents. Okay. Um, that being said, I adjourn the meeting. Okay. Bye.